Hey guys, H Masters here, and today we are reviewing the 2507 Fire Temple from the original pilot season of Ninjago back in 2011. This set came with 1,180 pieces and it retailed for $119. And then on the back of the box you can just see the functions just like any other set. The set came with four minifigures for the good guys and it came with three minifigures for the bad guys. It also came with of course the original fire dragon, two side structures for the temple and then just the temple itself. The original fire dragon is probably the worst out of all of the original dragons and a lot of that of course has to do with the fact that this is completely bundled in with the fire temple and is of course a side accessory here, it's not the main build. But taking a look at the dragon itself, it's actually pretty good. Of course the main thing right here is that it does have this just, you know, fully dual molded, not dual molded, but it is just a two piece head. And there is a function here, you can shoot off the dragon's breath simply by squeezing the dragon's head, which is pretty good and it works well and actually adds a decent amount of playability. It's kind of fun to be able to shoot off the dragon's breath and actually chase after the villains doing that. The wings are fully brick built and they are different from most Ninjago wings we have nowadays. They are completely foldable, which is actually pretty nice because you're able to fully sort of retract these and bring them back in back and forth, which creates different looks, which is pretty nice. And the color scheme is also pretty cool here with the orange with the dark yellow and that dark red. It works as well. You can also, of course, see a little bit of detailing with the spikes on the wings themselves going all the way across and even sticking out of the little shoulder-like element at the end. And then there are, of course, um, some claws on the tips of the wings at the very front that sort of act like hands, so you could grab minifigures with those because, you know, they are movable. Moving further along the back of the fire dragon, you can, of course, see some more and more detail. And again, the color scheme is actually really nice here. I really like how they managed to do that. I actually think this is probably one of the nicest, you know, color palettes they've used in all of Ninjago. The colors just work really well here and works well for the dragon. And then there is of course a flag on top where you can see some writing. And then the tail is of course very simple. It is of course fully articulated so you can move it all the way around. It does not have mixed little ball joints which makes it a little bit more limited than the modern tails. However, it is on a sort of swivel joint so you can move it side to side which is a little bit nice. And there's also of course an adjustable flame tip on the tip of the tail. However, what really drags this dragon down are the legs. The legs are just awful on this. The main reason the legs are so bad, there's a complete lack of ankle articulation. These feet are completely in place, you can't move them at all, which pretty much means these legs are in place. You can of course move the dragon, you know, up and down like this. You have that option, but if you want to move these legs to the side, you know, or something like that, then the legs aren't going to be fully on the ground, which in some cases it will work, like right now. You can see this uh, ridiculous pose I have the dragon in, but you can see how, you know, it can stand up, but if you move the legs certain lengths, it's not going to be able to fall anymore, because the legs are just completely lacking ankle articulation, which is truly just unfortunate, and it's really unnecessary too, because they really could have easily, you know, just done some sort of ball joint here, they could exchange this connection right here, all they had to do, swap out two pieces, and they could have made a ball joint connection there, which would have just completely allowed for ankle articulation. It would have made this dragon actually pretty good, but the posability is just completely ruined in a lot of ways because of that. However, the legs, after you know, after you look past that, the legs actually are pretty nice. The upper legs look good. The colors, once again, really like the colors on this. They work really well. There's not a, just there's a lot of nice shaping there, and for the most part, the design of the legs works. Just the lack of ankle articulation kills it for me. This dragon also has a built-in saddle section, which is of course is very nice to see. It's a more simpler saddle, however, I really like that the saddle is included. I think it really completes the look of it. And you can also see there are two chains. Now, of course, the chains are pretty simply attached. They are just attached uh, from these pegs, so you can pull them off like this. And then once you pull them off, that also actually, pulling the chains off is kind of useful because um, it allows extra head articulation. But what you mainly do with taking the chains off is you would take your Kai minifigure, or if you, know, you don't have to have Kai, but uh, probably you're going to be using Kai, and you would attach the chains to his hands like this. And once you connect the chains, you can fully fly the dragon using Kai, which works pretty well. However, the chains can be a little annoying to attach because it is only one piece. 
So, you know, you have to actually make sure this is the correct length to get it on both hands. Once you do that, you can just pick the dragon up like this, and then you can fly it around, and it flies around pretty well. You know, you have a pretty good area back here to be able to hold it, so you do get a good amount of playability from that. And here is the Fire Temple fully built in all of its glory. The Fire Temple is pretty big. It's about, it's a little bit taller than the size of two brickhead boxes on top of each other, as you can see here. And there's a lot of really cool features about this temple itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Starting off with the steps, you can see that they are fully tiled. And as you move up, you can see the sort of fire at the front of the temple. And this thing actually has a nice little shrine built around it with flames. You can see you can move it around and nothing really is going to happen. So you can have it at different poses. And it looks pretty good. I really like just this the flames coming out. It adds a nice bit of detail. The only thing I wish they really would have added here would be for the steps. I wish those steps would have been a little bit studded because, you know, it doesn't have to be fully studded. They could have just put like two studs or something. So that way you could stand your minifigures on there pretty easily without them falling off. And, you know, it, it depends. For certain people, the the uh, completely studless look is going to look a lot better. And for me, I think it looks fine. I just wish just for that little extra bit of playability that they were studded over there. However, there is the main feature right here. Now, the main feature of the temple is actually located right at this sort of fire. So basically what you'll do is that you would pull the sword up like this and the temple splits open like that, which is really cool. And you can see right back there, there's actually a stand, which I'll get into a little bit later, but it's pretty cool. You can split the whole thing open and the whole thing can just go right back together and stays in place, which is really cool. And the way that works is that there are two uh, lime green sort of uh, two by two round tile pieces on the side which you just push it in with and the entire function is just really nice and works really well. Now as you move along the front of the temple here you can already see tons of details. On each side there are these little gargoyle statues which look pretty nice. You can also see there's these two little red sort of like railing things. I'm not exactly sure what the name of it is, but I'm sure some of you guys in the comments will be able to give me a nice name of it. And there's also on each side these dragon windows, which are exclusive to the set, and they look really, really cool. They really add a nice look to the set, and they fit together pretty well. The only annoying thing for some people is going to be that little red bar in the middle from the window piece it attaches to. It's going to be, you know, one of those things that bothers certain people, because the way it is is that it kind of breaks up the flow of the dragon. Personally, I don't mind it at all though, and it just looks really cool. You can also see as you move a little bit further down, there are two lanterns on each side of the entrance, which you know is of course nice. And when you move actually a little bit down, you can see the whole thing sits on a water surface, which they do resemble with those blue base plates on the bottom. Well, not, not giant base plates, but you know, they are sort of like base plates. And then the whole thing has these little log textures going all the way around, which of course is just really nice and adds a ton of detail. Now moving further up the temple, you can see this top level has, again, a lot of nice details. The whole thing, of course, all over the roof has these little fire pieces sticking out on each side from the lower level and the upper level. But the, main details, the main details on the upper level are, of course, instead of gargoyles on this side, there are flames. You once again have those sort of like bench things or railing pieces from the front side, only these ones are a lot shorter. and. Instead of dragon windows, they have these Japanese or maybe Chinese, they're just some sort of writing instead of the dragons, which also looks nice, and you can still see a lot of nice details going across. There's also a giant hole in the center of the temple, which I will once again get to a little bit later, but as you move just again a little bit further up, you can see the top of the temple. Now the top of the temple is interesting because you can tell the whole thing splits from the center, but they still tried to get some nice details in there. There's a giant sort of circle thing in the middle, which uh, admittedly I did cheat to get it a little bit centered. You can see it's attached to a jumper piece and I moved it all the way to the left side because I didn't like it as much in the center because the instruction says to put it in the center, but if you move it a little bit towards the left, I think it gives some more centered look a little bit better, but that's not actually how it's supposed to be built. At the top, of course, is nice. There's studs all over, which is, of course, really good because you can display your minifigures all over and have battles all over the temple, which is something you're going to be wanting to do with this type of building. And the whole thing just looks really, really nice. Another thing to note is that each of these four sort of, uh, sort of pillar things that extend out of the roof of the temple on the side are movable. Now, they move a little bit uh, depending on the level. I think these lower ones are actually more secure than the top ones, but 
these top ones in particular, they really move all over the place and aren't really the most secure thing. Now you can tell there's a single gold stud up there for these top ones, which they use to sort of keep it in place, and it works for the most part, but it is movable, you know, they can be adjusted maybe a little bit too much. You're just gonna bother some people because they just go all over the place. Turning the temple to the side, you can see that there is just a completely uncovered side. These sides are just completely bare in the middle. You can see there's just holes right here, which to some extent works, but in other extents, you know, they might as well be filled up. It's just for a little bit easier access inside the temple from the side. Personally, I would have preferred it to see it covered up because there's not all that much you really get from having these sides open, but in some cases it works. It's sort of a trade-off for playability. However, when you move it all the way to the back, you get enough, uh, just a much better look at the interior of the temple. Now, first thing I want to say though right away is of course that there are a lot of continuations here on the bottom. You can see once again those water base plate things used there, and you can also see the brown pieces. However, for whatever reason they're studded on the back even though they were completely flat on the front, which is a little bit interesting of a choice, however I think it works fine. But taking a look at the interior of the temple starting at the entrance you can see from the front that little bit of an entrance mat with two studs there in the center two golden studs where you can put a minifigure there are two golden swords which are adjustable on the front so you can move them up and down they can sort of act like a trap so uh, some guy that's not supposed to enter in like say a skeleton tries to walk in you can drop those swords on him and there are also two fire pieces to sort of you know resemble the whole fire theme that are also by the entrance on the right side of the temple, you can see this sort of training area where they have this sort of like training machine, which you can just spin around a little bit like this. Each sort of level can spin uh, individually if you want, but you can hold, you can move the whole thing all at once. You know that is an option for you guys if you want to. And you can also see in the very back a sword, which again for training you could take that out. Or you could use it as defense, depending on what situation you might be in. You could take the sword out to defend against attackers, or you could take the sword out to train with the sort of training thing they have on the side. You can also see a lot of nice detailing going on the floor with this sort of matte pattern, which looks, again, very nice. On the left side of the temple, you can see that sort of rug design continues. It's the exact same thing laid out the same way, which is nice for continuity, and I think it looks pretty nice here. As you can see in the center, there's a sort of table with food on it. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be, but personally I think it's like a table with food, and I would assume they'd be eating like sushi or something like that. In the back, that once again, there is a weapon. In this case, it is a spear, which again, depending on you know whatever scenario you've set up, could be used for attacking or for training, depending on what scenario you set your characters in. On the upper level of the temple, there isn't really anything to do here. It is studded so you can put any characters you feel like putting there, but there's nothing really, you know, exactly to play with, like on the bottom. It's just completely studded so you can just have a battle up there or something. Now taking a look at this platform in the back, this platform actually has a purpose. This platform serves as a stand for the fire dragon. What you can do is you could take the fire dragon on like this, and you can put the head through the hole of the temple and it sits on the stand like this. The stand works pretty well, it's able to fully sit it in there pretty nice and you can adjust it around a little bit so if you want it more centered or maybe more to the right or left you are able to do that without it falling off the stand and this adds a completely different look to the temple which I find really adds to it because the way those wings fold out on the side just adds a really nice look and the main thing about this is that the function works so much better with this because the main thing of the function here really is that what you would be doing would be you would be trying to steal the sword of fire so what happens is you lift up the sword of fire trying to steal it and the temple splits open and you can see the fire dragon which is really really cool because the whole thing is that the fire dragon is the guardian of the sword of fire it's just like the show you try to steal the weapon and then the guardian, in this case the dragon, comes out to sort of defend it. And I think that makes the function even more perfect. It's just so well done, fits in so well, and it really relates to the TV show, which is something which, you know, is a major selling point of this set. Taking a look at the minifigures, starting off with Kai DX, or the dragon suit version of Kai, you can see right away that there are some major differences from the uh, minifigures of today. Main difference being, of course, the hood mold which has no head articulation whatsoever. You can't move the head on this figure because of the hood mold, which is pretty unfortunate. The actual printing is pretty cool. 
You can see he has the whole dragon printing going from the legs and the torso and you can see the dragon breathing fire which looks pretty nice. The sword of fire is a really really cool mold. You can see how it's like the dragon's head and then how it sort of comes out onto the flame piece there. On the back you can see that he comes with another sword and when you remove the actual uh, hood you can see his symbol and the lettering of Kai and his face is the same face we've had from all of the Kais up until the hands of time where we finally got a new face for Kai. The original version of Zane is pretty simple just like Kai he suffers from having the old hood mold which means a pretty much complete lack of articulation in the head. His printing is pretty simple nothing too crazy he has a little bit of printing on the belt too and then on the back you can see no printing whatsoever but he does have a clip on the back for his sword. The original version of Nia has some pretty decent printing here. You can see that she has her symbol all the way going through. She has two brick build knives actually, which are pretty simple. They're just gray spikes and the lightsaber piece. On the back she has no printing, just like most of the figures. However, she's the only figure in the set that actually comes with an alternate face, which is sort of like a ninja masked version of Nia. He's sort of like pre-ninja from, you know, nowadays we have Nia as a ninja, but way back then, you know, this was the closest thing we had. This set came with one of the more common versions of Sensei Wu and is a black kimono, which looks pretty cool. When you take off the beard, you can see a lot more of that printing there going all the way down from that sort of lettering on the side to the belt itself. When you move it to the side, you can see he has white arms, which is kind of cool because there's a little bit of a contrast to the black. You can see he has one of those dragons, which is pretty similar to the dragon on the fire temple and it looks really nice and he has no alternate face. Here is the original Lord Garmadon with only two arms. You can see he has his staff which is really cool. I uh, really like the way that is. But you, when you move on to the actual figure, he's got some really nice printing on the chest. He's got a purple belt too which is pretty cool and his face printing is also nice along with his helmet. On the back he's got no printing whatsoever and there's no arm printing either. The figure itself is actually pretty cool. Krunksha is one of the more major skeleton villains here, and he's pretty cool. His armor is a lot more intricate than most of the skeleton guys, as you can see he's got a whole lot of detail going all around it. His weapon's also pretty cool, you can see a lot of just the detail from the actual weapon itself because of the way that it's molded here, it has that sort of uh, dot-like pattern which looks cool. In the back there is of course no printing because it is a skeleton, but his helmet's actually pretty cool with the the print that goes over top but you get a lot of nice details from it and then his eyes also look pretty good he just has a lot of nice printing on here and this is an overall solid figure Samukai is probably the coolest figure out of all the figures of the set just by virtue of that four arms he has three or maybe two and a half of the golden weapons since he only has one shuriken of ice but you can tell, you know, obviously he's got the forearms, which looks pretty cool. His jaw actually is, well, not necessarily his jaw, but his head is movable. This moves up and down, which is cool. Just the figure looks really nice. You can just see the whole way it works. He's got some nice printing on the head. His spine is really nicely detailed. It looks really nice back there. It's just overall pretty cool. And then you can see the golden weapons, which aren't anywhere near as cool as the sort of fire, but they're still pretty cool. I'm not quite sure why they went you know, like, all out on the Sword of the Fire, but then these other golden weapons are just kind of, like, just kind of pieces slabbed together versus the Sword of Fire, which was just, like, a whole giant mold. It was an interesting choice, but, you know, that's what they did, so it works out pretty well. Overall, I really like the Fire Temple. Now, I know a lot of people nowadays aren't going to be able to get it, however, I still think the set is very good, and if you are able to actually find a good deal on it, then I would say to go for it, because the set's actually really cool. The dragon is pretty disappointing for the most part, especially if you're going to be coming from the newer dragons. Uh, for the older dragons, it's not that bad. If you start off with the older dragons, it's not too bad. It's like for back in the day, this dragon was fine, it was good, but compared to the newer ones, it just doesn't hold up at all. And you know that is mainly because of the lack of ankle articulation. The temple completely holds up though. The temple is really good. The interior is a little disappointing. I wish it was more you could do inside. However, I think the function and just the overall look of the thing as a structure is really good. Those two little side structures are actually decent. They add a lot more to the set than you would expect because they actually add a whole lot to the appearance. Sort of like a gateway thing. And although they're small and minor, they do add a pretty good amount here. None of the minifigures are exclusive, but they all are good ones. The probably least cool one, in my opinion, would be the Nia figure, although, you know, that's just, that's just me. Different people have different opinions. 
but I still think the set is good. Now, for the $120 price tag that it came out with, uh, I think that's just a little bit hefty. I think the best case scenario would have been the wait for $100, because then the set would have definitely been worth it. $120 is a little bit much, though, in my opinion. However, again, the set is good, and I actually would recommend getting it if you could get it today at a good price. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Fire Temple. Until next time, see you guys later.